Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Installation Lab. In this video I'll show basic procedures that apply to almost all clutches. Cleaning the flywheel, cleaning the pressure plate friction surface, lubricating the splines of the input shaft and the clutch disc, dealing with release bearings, and just in general good points to follow for a successful clutch installation. As you're working on the clutch installation, always inspect for any source of oil leaks. This is a rear main seal leak on this engine. This must be serviced before installing the new clutch or you risk contaminating the new clutch, causing slippage and or chatter. The oil in this transmission housing was not coming from a leaking rear main. It was coming from a worn out O-ring on the distributor just above the transmission housing and it dripped down in and contaminated the clutch. The friction surface of the flywheel must be cleaned before installing the clutch. We recommend using clean shop towels and brake clean. Spray the brake clean on the shop towel, wipe down the flywheel, change the rag, and repeat until the flywheel is clean. If you don't clean the flywheel, the clutch can slip and it can also cause chatter. The friction surface of the pressure plate must also be cleaned. Again, clean shop towel, brake clean, spray the rag, wipe down the friction surface, this is a pilot bushing. It's either brass or bronze material and to install it, tap it in with a hammer using a driver or a socket. But to lubricate this, don't use any type of grease, just motor oil. A few drops of motor oil on the pilot bushing. This pilot bearing is a needle bearing design and it uses grease for the lubricant. Some applications use a ball bearing as a pilot bearing. No lubrication required. Just carefully tap it into the flywheel, or in some cases, the crankshaft. But some applications don't use one. Here's a Toyota that doesn't use one. And here's a Volkswagen that doesn't have a pilot bearing. The transmission input shaft and splines must be cleaned completely before reinstalling the transmission. This input shaft has a pretty good coating of rust on there. That rust doesn't allow the clutch disc to slide freely and it can cause shifting problems. This must be cleaned prior to installation. The input shaft on this transmission has been thoroughly cleaned and is ready for the next step of the installation process. Using a very small quantity of high temperature wheel bearing grease, we're going to lubricate the splines of the input shaft. This helps prevent corrosion. Make sure you don't use too much lubricant Pick up the clutch disc with clean hands, slide it onto the input shaft, pull it off, index it, slide it back on, pull it off, index it, slide it back on. This is just distributing that grease between the input shaft splines and the splines of the clutch disc. The clutch disc and pressure plate assembly are now installed on the flywheel. The bolts are all still loose. Using the alignment tool, verify that the clutch disc is properly centered. This will be very helpful later as you install the transmission. Now using a ratchet, just tighten each bolt about three-quarter turn at a time in a staggered pattern. Please don't use any impact guns or air ratchets to do this job. Three-quarter turn, staggered pattern, pull the pressure plate down against the flywheel until it's seated on the flywheel. After the bolts are seated, you can now use a torque wrench and tighten each of the bolts to final torque specifications. Again, a staggered pattern is recommended. Some applications use a clutch cable. Please check the adjustment procedure and adjust them accordingly. Also, there are some systems where the cable is an automatic adjusting system, and that usually is up underneath the dashboard right at the clutch pedal. Check the service manuals for the correct procedures for resetting these systems. Clutch hydraulic release systems must be correctly bled for the clutch to function correctly. We have many videos, each one showing a specific procedure for the type of hydraulic system you're working with. Some clutch release bearings have a metal collar that the bearing slides on on the guide tube of the transmission. This collar can be cast iron, aluminum, or steel. So if it's a metal collar going on a metal guide tube, you must apply grease and make sure that it's greased in the collar for the bearing to slide freely. Some bearings have a non-metallic collar. This one may have what look like grooves running from the front of the bearing to the back side of the bearing, straight through. No seals, no o-rings. That type of bearing is installed dry. 
no grease on the guide tube of the transmission. Some bearings have a non-metallic collar that has a grease groove in it. Apply a small amount of high temperature wheel bearing grease to the grease groove and a small amount to the guide tube of that transmission. The transmission must be carefully guided into position so that the input shaft aligns with the clutch disc and slides in. The transmission should go all the way up to the engine on the dowel sleeves or pins, then you can start to put the bolts in. Please don't put the bolts in and pull the transmission into place with the bolts. Don't let the transmission hang on the clutch disc either. Either of those practices will damage the clutch disc. If you have any questions about a clutch, flywheel, or clutch hydraulic release system, please go to clutchtechsupport.com. Enter our part number, our phone number, our bulletins, and any other videos will be listed right there to help you out.